this is Sierra, and welcome to another video. Today we are doing another short story, and we are doing a sequel to a story I've already written. Because, yeah, I kind of needed a sequel. And I came up with a good idea yesterday. And, eh. It's like I need to find a way to get it to work, and I found it to work. It's like I need to write it down. I can't stop thinking about it, so I just wrote the story down, and I'm sharing it now. Because, why not? Anyway, if you enjoyed this story and you want to read from the first one, it will be in the description, as well as Stampy's and Squishy's channel. And, yeah. Because it's a fun story. Hope you guys enjoy it. Gorgie and the Cat. Head to Tuggy Returns. This is a sequel of a short story fan fiction featuring Stampy Cat, Squishy, and their, their real life dog, a little corgi named Alex. <sighs> Chapter 1, or Part 1, is Stampy's perspective. They're like in parts now, so I'm doing perspectives. But yeah, it's a little longer, so we'll see how this goes. It was an ordinary day in the household that Stampy shared with his family. The sky was gray and cloudy, as if it would burst into a downpour at any moment. It was something he didn't mind much, since he'd already taken Alex on a walk earlier that day with his lovely wife, Squishy. At this moment, he was sitting by himself, working on various different things on his computer, while Alex, the three-and-a-half-year-old cor toy-colored corgi, lay beside him on the couch in his office. There was silence as he worked. Stampy knowing that Squishy was streaming at this time, and the internet was only able to handle one of them streaming at a time. He didn't mind that at the slightest, especially if she was enjoying it. <laughs> As he was working, however, he heard a noise not too far away, where the TV was, in fact. Puzzled, Stampy looked up to see that, indeed, the TV was on. But something felt off about it. The screen was showing him a scene before him. Scene he didn't understand. There was a large nether brick castle looming with lava surrounding it. Apparently, Grammarly, like, uh, there's no mistake. <laughs> Ugh. So I could try to run it through with Grammarly, it didn't work, so. <laughs> surrounding it like a boat, pouring out into a side, in, in, on one side like a sickly waterfall. Or was it a lava, lava fall? <laughs> Couldn't be so sure. The scene looked awful. Awfully familiar as he counted the redstone torches along the path that led up to the castle, which seemed bigger than he had remembered. He only knew one place that could possibly be like that, but why? Snippy stood up and walked over to his TV to the TV, causing curious Alex to look up at him. Surprise! He told her to stay, but as he went over to the screen to try to see if he could turn it off, he couldn't. As if he was frozen on the, onto his screen, his puzzle, that puzzled even more him even more as he looked at the screen, realizing that the scene was no longer a still image, but zooming in towards the castle. Something about it felt uneasy. I'm not sure what he should do about it. He was not sure what he was sure what he would do about this. The screen only seemed to zoom in more, and he went over to his Xbox and grabbed his controller, trying to see if he could move it in any way. He couldn't. It was as if whatever this was had been put on autopilot. As the screen entered the castle, it looked larger and more ominous than he had remembered. The iron cage was gone, but the red parrot that he remembered remained sitting on a ledge on the ceiling. It's beady black eyes staring down at him. They looked almost cold and lifeless. Almost like his nemesis eyes was. But this could be his lovely world. This could be happening. Could it the target have anything to do with this? Something about this is wrong. Very wrong. Maybe he should get squishy. No. He didn't want to bother her. Besides, it was probably nothing anyway. Suddenly, as the camera on the screen moved, it turned back toward the entrance of the castle, 
Stampy nearly dropped his controller completely. Standing there was a figure in red and gold. But it took him it took him a moment to realize that it wasn't his target. Instead, it was Vivadash, his partner, who was very excellent at potions and redstone. Are you doing this? The young man asked her, partly uneased by what was happening. He knew how this sort of thing worked. This couldn't be happening. His lovely world was purely for entertainment. This couldn't mean anything at all. Maybe someone was playing a prank on him? Squishy? Uncertained, he walked away from the television screen and walked toward the door, only to hear a knocking, a knock, n a distance. Was someone knocking on the door at the door? Stimpy saw Alex immediately spring into action as he ran from the couch. <sighs> the open door. <coughs> Alex, wait! Stimpy called as he quickly glanced back at the screen which seemed to have turned off on his own. No Viva Dash staring back at him. No hint of Target's castle anywhere in view. Could have been Arnold's part of his imagination, right? No, it couldn't be. He chased after his corgi as she went into to the back door, which made him freeze in his tracks when Alex started barking through the window. What is it, girl? He asked her, with even more unease. Who could possibly be at his door right now? His backyard. He looks through the window to the door, spotting someone standing at his door. A familiar face, and he did a slight smile on his face. No, <gasps> how? The young man asked his friend, and he stepped back, pulling back the corgi just in case and the turkey tried to smash his way through. How is he here, though? How had he gotten here? You should let me in if you know what's best for you. A familiar voice muffled through the doorway. He swallowed as he remembered the moment back in Mirror World, where he had been transported out of his lovely world by his nemesis and forced into a mere version of his world. The man had been able to speak because he wasn't in the lovely world. Was this the case, too, in the real world? Duh, this wasn't good. <laughs> what will you do if I don't? He demanded. This is my house, and you don't have a right to enter. This is no more your house than your supposed lovely world. Your, than your supposed lovely world or yours, cat. The turkey said slowly, firmly. Actually, I paid for this house. <laughs> yep, it technically is mine. <laughs> it does not matter. Open the door! <laughs> the turkey demanded through the door. Or I'll make sure you'll never see your dogs back in your world ever again. Stampy hesitated, glancing over at his corgi with uncertainty. Why was Hitchcock doing this? Why now? What's going on that he didn't know about? Hang on, let me make sure Alex is headed away. Stampy told him at last, hoping by, to buy some time to get squashy or maybe attempt to call the authorities. Would that even work? No one would believe that his number one enemy was at his door during the war virgin to do whatever he wanted. What did he want anyway? <laughs> Steppy ushered the a reluctant corgi into a separate room, closing the door behind him as he made sure she couldn't slip through. Last thing he wanted was for his dog to get hurt. Any of his dogs, really. He had quite the attachment to them. He'd rather put himself at risk than seeing his canine companions get hurt. Hurry up, Stampy! We don't have much time. It to take his muffled shouts came from the other room. Should he try to get squishy? What could the both of them do against this man? Surely he'd be able to figure this all this all out, right? This couldn't be possible. He'd be the real hit to target anyway. He was almost sure. Maybe it was if he dressed up as hit to target to scare him. Why would anyone do that? Well, he wasn't sure if he wanted to know. Why someone wanted, would want to do that. <laughs> Who are you, really? Stimpy asked firmly as he approached the door, hesitating, unsure if he should open it. You know very well who I am and what I'm capable of. And the target sneered through the door. We both know how it all started. And we both know that someone is going to have to finish this. That someone 
is... Mm, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Stampy said divinely. That's what you would think. I would do. <laughs> the target said with a chuckle. Now open the door. I'll open it for you. <laughs> Sophie took a step back from the door and folded his arms together. Go ahead and try it. Very well, the man, villain said simply. As the young man heard the, the thud from the doorway, he watched quietly as his target shoved at the door before it suddenly clicked. He watched in stunned horror as it slowly opened. Revealing the red and gold robed villain he knew so well. The glint of his golden crown glowing in the cloudy sky behind him. How did you do that? <laughs> Stampy asked as he took another step back. I have my way, Stampy Cat, the man said as he walked towards him, his pace quick and unnatural. The villain towered over him as he ca caught up to the young YouTuber before he couldn't even react. It's a target. Grabbed him. He grabbed his enemy and began to drag him towards the backyard. What are you doing? Let me go! Steffi demanded as he fought against the man, but he was unnaturally strong. How is this possible? This couldn't be happening. Let me go! Will you over credit? No, no, you know those. Those petty threats won't help you. The man said with a sly smile as Steffi struggled against the man as he felt the cold breeze wash over him as they neared the bushes. I rebuilt that portal so that I could see you. Too bad you tried to stop me from completing my plan the first two times. Wait, what? <laughs> the man, young man asked in surprise. You returned from your mirrored world without an issue. Stop me from rescuing your dog, taking your dogs, the man sneezed. Then you found the portal that I so carefully hidden. Alex found it, not me, the young man retorted. I wouldn't have known it was there if she hadn't gone through the bushes. Hmm. She said definitely. Well, as you could probably guess, I have plans for you and your so-called lovely world. She says, now I will rightfully rule it. As I was meant to. You're delusional, <laughs> the young man said bitterly as he neared the portals. Which seemed bigger than he had remembered. It lost. I don't think your helpers will be able to save you this time, Stumpy Cat. Not the way I've done it. <laughs> the man said with a laugh as he was pulled through the portal. Stumpy feeling a funny sensation of unease as he slipped through. Wondering what exactly become of him. Yeah. Squishy's point of view. On. Squishy was having fun playing the new. Oh, boy. The new Animal Crossing game, New Horizons. The chat was always going crazy and giving out suggestions for what she should do. There was so much she could do on her little island of Buddy Tobia. <laughs> it was absolutely wonderful, and she couldn't believe just how much. People were willing to watch her do these kinds of things. They were all having fun, and she was happy about that. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, and she continued streaming. A good 30 minutes passed before something distant caught her attention. Hang on, do you guys hear that? She asked with uncertainty. Why did it sound like a dog barking? Was Alex locked in a room somewhere, planning to get out? Surely Stampy could handle it, right? But a few moments passed. The barking continued. It didn't stop, and she didn't hear anything from Stampy's office or downstairs. Something wrong. She looked over at the chat to see people saying they could hear the faint barking of Alex as well. So she wasn't imagining that. I'm going to go see what's going on. I'll be right back. She pressed the button as to be back. Soon the screen popped up. She stood up and walked out of her room. Walking towards the barking, she found Alex, sure enough, locked in one of the rooms, but when she opened the door, the dog slipped up past her and ran towards the window, barking outside, looking anxious. Alex, what's wrong? Squishy asked as she walked over to the corgi. She looked outside, but saw nothing. There's nothing out there. 
The dog whined anxiously as she ran from the window to the door, her usual upright tail lower, still wagging, but expressing an emotion she only had seen whenever fireworks were going off. But they weren't going off. Do you want to go outside? Squint, she tried, opening the door. But the corky only scrambled away from the door, whining anxiously. Squishy sighed as in frustration, not sure what the corgi wanted until she looked down at something at the ground. She bent down to pick it up and looked at it. It looked to be an arrow of some kind, like a Minecraft arrow normally would look like. She looked over at the corgi, who yipped at her anxiously, running away towards Stampy's office. <sighs> Thanks, Grimmerly. <laughs> Yay, it actually knows how to spell our name. That's great. Then again, I probably taught it to do that. <laughs> Squishy reluctantly followed, glancing back nervously as the memory return as her memory returned. She returned from some errands weeks ago when Stampy had told her the little adventure he and the Corgi had gone through. He claimed he'd been transported to his lovely world with Alex and was trying to get her back home. His target had been there. She thought it was just a simple story, but what if it was true? What if something had happened to Stampy? She knew the trademark. She knew the trademark that his target had was an arrow, but and she had found an arrow in front of her back door. Was this somehow linked? Was this what the corgi was trying to tell her? No, it couldn't be. She was just being paranoid. It was she. Stampy, are you in here? She called. Poking through the doorway into the office, not seeing her husband anywhere. An easiness filled her as she noticed Alex staring at the television relentlessly. Her eyes are moving. When she looked towards the screen, she didn't see anything. Where's Stampy, Alex? She asked the corgi, not sure she would get it. a response. When the corgi didn't respond, she walked over to the dog and began to pet her. Stopping when the corgi let out a little crawl. Suddenly, she spotted the X an Xbox controller on the ground. It went to pick it up. Suddenly, it went all into place. And she knew what she had to do. Right, change of plan, she said quickly as she stood up and walked toward the door. The dog perking her ears up in, up in curiosity. We need to get into the lovely world and see what's happened. It's the first place to look, anyway. The dog said nothing as she stood and followed Squishy back to her studio. As Squishy sat down and changed the game from Animal Crossing to Minecraft, she quickly changed the title to The Stream to A Lovely World Rescue. Sure, people would understand what was going on. She could see people were starting to get confused about the title, and she tried to figure out what to say. Could she be able to do this by herself? She wasn't sure, but she couldn't leave Stampy alone with this, his enemies like this. How could she even be sure this was real anyway? There had to be some reason and she couldn't find Stampy, other than an errand at least. She switched back to screen so it would show herself, and she saw the chat explode with questions. She could hardly keep up with it all as she began to explain what was going on and what she thought was, must have happened. The job was still going, and she tried to figure out what to do. I don't know what I'm going to find when I go in the lovely world, she admitted. Everything should be fine, but it's not. I, I need to figure this out and help Stampy if I can. She finally loaded up Minecraft and went over to where she could see any of her friends playing. Sure enough, she did spot something. Something really strange. Normally, Stampy would have his world set so that only those he invited could join. Here it was. The world was for everyone to see. But that wasn't right. Stampy wasn't playing in his lovely world, was he? Going with her instinct, she went to join the world. Still full of thoughts and questions. Maybe because Stampy was technically in the world, it was showing up. It was the only lead she had. If you can join in today, help me feel free, she replied to everyone in the stream. All the help would be very much appreciated. 
Finally, she was able to join the world, excitement and unease filling her as she went through Stimpy's house until she arrived to his bedroom. She looked into the room to see that it was empty, and Barnaby sitting where he was supposed to be. Good. Had the target hadn't gone out to duck yet. At least, not for Barnaby. But something across the balcony caught her eye. It looked to be a portal. And the exact portal that Stampy had described to her in the story. This is it, she said. As she noticed people were starting to come in, Shelly had the target would know that they had come in, right? Which meant that if they needed to find Stampy and help him, they couldn't say they're playing in the game chat. Otherwise, things they could risk hit the target being able to stop them. And the last thing she wanted was for something bad to happen to Stampy. They had to be careful with this. Messing up would not be an option in this case. They only had one shot. It had to be done right the first time. Stampy. Stampy found himself locked in an iron bar cell inside of Hit the Target's castle, watching as Hit the Target paced the room. The villain had been unable to talk since they had entered the lovely world, which is something Stabby had expected. So, everything seemed awfully quiet and still. Too still. He was alone in his world, with his enemies, no one being able to help him. Well, it is dark, it seemed to think so. So, what do you want with me, then, since you've locked me in here? Might as well tell me a thing or two. The YouTuber said a matter of fact, like, she took a pause and read the curious eyebrow at him, as if expecting him to know. I know what you could do, Mr. Target, but I don't always know what you are, you will always, what you always will do, Stampy said simply. You were created to be a cunning, sneaky, and sometimes stupid villain. <laughs> Anger sparked in his Target's eyes as the young man added, not that you're, you are stupid, it's target. That wouldn't make any sense. Sometimes your ideas just are just stupid and full of fun. <laughs> Ouch. And the target shook his head as if disappointed in him for some reason. Or maybe he was simply ignoring him because he was trying to get out of the nurse. What would this man do if he angered him enough? Would he try to kill him? Stampy doubted that he'd be able to respawn to the fact that he was in his human body his Minecraft invincible body. Wait, that sounded weird. Never mind. <laughs> you really don't want to do this? Whatever you're planning, Stampy said matter of factly, this won't make the world a better place. Trapping and forcing people to do what you want is going to help you. She <laughs> took it started and glared at him. Stampy didn't have to guess what he was saying. The villain had said that to his character back on the first day the lovely ink skyscraper was opened. And the target had almost won that day if it had been for his helpers, stepping in to give him a hand, but his helpers weren't here for him this time. This wasn't a video. This was real. This was dangerous. Anything he did could risk dozens of consequences. He needs to buy time. How would he know anyone would know he was gone? How long could he last here? Stampy watched as the target began to pace the room again, silently thinking to himself, Was there a way for the young man to escape? No, he was too weak to break the iron bars on his own. Sure, this was Minecraft, but he wasn't as strong as a Minecraft player. In fact, he found the human body was far weaker than that of the Minecraft skin any player would wear. He was fragile. He could get hurt. He had to be careful. Suddenly, something appeared in front of him. On the left side of his side of position. What did it say? Squishy quack. Showing the game. Wait. What? <laughs> Stabby looked over at the target. Who glanced over at him. Both looking surprised. Hope filled him as he looked back to see if anything else popped up. More names showed up on the screen, and people began to join. The look of surprise and hit the target's face turned into frustration as he stormed out of the castle, leaving the young YouTuber alone. Was he going to talk to Vivitash? Had something slipped through? Squishy must have figured out a way to get help. He wasn't on his own anymore. He just hoped things would work out. 
Suddenly, a gray text appeared on the screen, slanted in whispered text that he was not quite very familiar with. We're coming, Stampy. Just hang in there. He closed his eyes and took a slow, deep breath. Deep, reassuring breath. She must have gotten her stream together to try to help him. He was he had no idea. He was no what? <laughs> she he was no idea, wow. He had no idea how grateful he was until now to have a wonderful way of looking crazy. Sure he did have those moments, but right in there He appreciated her earnestness to help. I don't know if that's the correct word for that, but <laughs> and seeing all the people who were, who were following her in joining showed that this definitely be a battle. His target was now outnumbered. That didn't mean he was finished. Stippy was still trapped in his castle, vulnerable and absolutely everything around to absolutely everything around him. Even the he was throwing it to him. It gets a little much. Hurry. His thoughts went out. So he thought his squishy would hear them, or anyone for that matter. He needed to get out of here soon, otherwise things wouldn't be so happily, and so happily as he hoped. <laughs> a few moments passed before he had to tug it returned, with a viva dash at his heels. So there was no anger in the villain's eyes as he glanced over his stumpy. Still trapped and unable to escape. What are you going to do now? Stumpy asked him, looking warily at Viva Dash. She wasn't sh- he wasn't sure how strong her splash potions would be on his puny body. Not that he would call himself puny, but based on the situation at hand, he was far weaker than any player starting up a brand new world. Minecraft expert turned a Minecraft minute into a Minecraft weekly. <laughs> hmm. His target gave him a small, sly smile, as if a plan was forming in his mind. This wouldn't be easy. None of this would. He knew that. His target sometimes wouldn't go down without a fight if he could achieve his end goal. If he could get Stampy out of the way, he would win. How was he going to do that? How he was going to do that? Something Stampy wasn't sure he wanted to know. Squishy. Squishy ran out of the house towards the spawn of the world where she had told those who had joined the stream to wait. Warning them not to say anything useful in the game chat in case the target had was watching it. Last thing she wanted was to risk hit the target getting wind to get wind of what was going on. Hit the target probably already knew they were here, but didn't mean he knew what they were planning to do. Plainly, she arrived to the spawn area, seeing people hanging out around the beach. They all ran over to her when they saw her, jumping around in excitement. No doubt they were ready for what would come next. She glanced over at the stream chat to see a few questions popping up from time to time. All right, we all know where the fortress is, right? She asked everyone, waiting for her all of them or not. Good, now, this is the plan, but... I want to make sure everyone understands the situation here. Don't talk about what's going on in the game chat. It's target can no doubt read that, see that. She waited until they all nodded again. All right. We need to do this together. You guys have the best. You guys try your best to distract and get the target and Viva Dash as far away from Snappy as possible. While I go in and get him out of that fortress. She glanced over at the chat, seeing a few more questions pop. It's where the target would certainly be. So was Stampy. Another round of nodding ensued as she took a deep breath. Are we ready to do this, or would you guys like some armor and weapons? <laughs> yeah, I go right in without anything. See how that goes. <laughs> it was a long pause before there were a few people nodding. She told them to follow... As they went through the town into the house, where she found items to make armor and weapons. Soon everyone was suited up and ready to go, as she commanded them to march towards the castle. Stay together and help each other out, she told them. It's all of you against the Tuggy Dash. 
I know you can handle that. Most of you can anyway. <laughs> Finally, they could see an island up ahead. The island up ahead. It's quite she split off from the group. Trying to stay to the back to hide herself from the two villains. She wanted to make sure they were being taken care of before tricking on Stampy. And they began to march up the stairs. Squishy she could spot him, Tiger and Viva Dash walking in towards them. Looking fairly amused. Suddenly, arrows began to fly as hidden dispensers appeared and started firing at people. <laughs> she slipped away as she saw them push forward, using the new handy shield to block the arrows. This was working. She managed to sneak up from behind the castle and build her way up to the open balcony area on the roof. She looked down below to see to make sure no one else was down there. Stampy before she hopped down. She turned to find the iron cell that Stampy was locked behind. He looked exhausted and tired, sweating on stop. His eyes slowly looking up as he managed to smile. You came his voice croaked. Horse Perhaps from the lack of water. How are you so... Never mind. She said as she lo- shook her head and broke through the bars with the pickaxe, helping him stand. We need to get you out of here. You know, what's going on outside? Fierce in battle, she said. With a smile for you. I knew you'd come. <laughs> he said in relief. This place is hot, though. I had to talk in Viva Dash. I worry I had to talk in able, Viva Dash able to live like this. Because Minecrafters aren't human, she said with a swing. Unlike you, Minecrafters, he mused with a <laughs> What else do you call them? So she asked with a chuckle as she went up the ladder and towards the back of this island. Can people see what you're doing right now? He asked hoarsely, his voice raspy and dry. Yeah, she nodded. I think it's a target can now. Suddenly, arrows suddenly flew over their heads as they both shot in surprise as they tumbled down the mini hill and towards the water. Squishy looked back to see a target right behind them. How did he know we were back here? She asked. Someone told him. Stampy <laughs> said bitterly. How do you know? She asked with surprise. Stampy said. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> right. She replied as she scooped Stampy off the ground and began to run around the island until she came to the ice. Its target still on her tail until a couple of viewers attacked him, shoving him into the lava pool below. I squishy had a feeling that the target had accounted for that. She didn't dare look behind her as she ran towards the town, trying her best not to slip and fall. She did so. The wind was blowing through her ears as she went towards the house, not sure if they had anyone pursuing them. Suddenly, she heard a shatter of glass behind them as she glanced back to see it's a target tearing after them. That's not good, Stampy admitted simply. No, of course it isn't, she said quickly as she looked around the path, run, running into the house and towards the slip garden. You need to get through that portal and get out. Get yeah, cold. How about you? He asked. I can handle his target. Trust me, she means right now. You cannot. Okay. He nodded as they ran through the love garden. The villain still at their heels as she ran to the portal and put Stampy down, letting him stand before standing between him and his target. Go, Stampy, she demanded, as the young YouTuber opened the door reluctantly. Please be careful, Stampy told her. I will, she assured him as his target extended a bow. She extended the sword. Just be quick, and you might be able to surprise him. All right. Her husband replied before he disappeared through the portal. Squishy prepared to charge and hit the target. The man who had imprisoned and attacked her man. Very unfairly. It was one thing when it was in the video. Completely different when a villain was truly trying to make a mess of things. This was beyond insane. But she would, she would make sure it wouldn't happen again. Step so, This is the final part. Stampy fell onto the grassy ground of the real world, looking back to see that the portal was gone. There was nothing left of it, but his mind wasn't thinking about that as he stood up and stumbled towards the house, opening the door, and he called out for Squishy. I'm in here, she shouted. 
Hurry! I'm hurrying! He all learned back, relieved to see that she was okay. He ran into the kitchen and grabbed a glass of water. Sure, it wasn't tea, but he was desperate to get something to drink after almost an hour of that in that lava hot fortress. But he would be okay. Once he was done with, what, with that, he ran towards his office, seeing Alex bounding towards him from Squashy's office. His son brain with relief as he saw her running into his office and grabbing a separate controller, turning his game on, and easily hopped into the, his lovely world immediately. It was a surprise, but it was perfect. As he found himself in his bedroom once more, this time as an orange ginger cat. Snappy ran out onto his balcony, seeing Squishy destroying the portal while fighting back at the target. He leapt down from the balcony and onto the ground, attacking the target from behind with his overpowered sword. Knocking him into the lovely waterfall. That's what you get for trapping me in that awful cage. Steppy said defiantly as the target's eyes grew wide. As he charged at, him, as the cat charged at him. And the target dodged him and pulled himself out of the water. Charging towards the love garden. Oh no you don't. Not this time. Steppy alerted as he charged after him. Now I think it's crazy was destroying the remainder of the portal. I wouldn't be able to use it to get to him in the real world again. <laughs> Debbie ran after his attorney as the villain ran past the doghouse and back towards his island. No doubt planning to meet up with Eve Dash once again. Steppy could see a few players ahead coming towards them. About three in total, for he froze in his tracks as he saw Viva Dash running with them. Jeez, people weren't on this side. He was outnumbered. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Squishy, I need help over here. Debbie hollered, hoping she would be able to hear him. He watched as hit the targets, slowed for turning around, extending another bow and arrow. You know you can't kill me at the target. Debbie said confidently, I'll just respawn, just as everyone else will. Except everyone besides you. Had a target scowled menacingly, no doubt trying to intimidate him. Steffi was no longer afraid. Even if he was outnumbered, he certainly was not outmatched. Go ahead, do it. You know you want to. Steffi taunted the villain, looking at the people siding with him. Trying me isn't a big deal, but do you really want to help him knowing that, uh, how much of a liar and a manipulator he is? I would know very well, since I've had to deal with him for years. <laughs> they said nothing, but he didn't need them to. It was their choice, not his. He was just surprised that people were seriously... would seriously do something like this, as if it were some sort of game. Sure, it was a game, but it had been, danger it had been a dangerous one. One which could have resulted in a very bad outcome for him if Squishy hadn't done her part to help him. Steffi watched for a little longer warily before he suddenly spotted a dozen other players charging from behind. Hope filled him as, he, as they overwhelmed the target and his allies, forcing them to flee as he watched in amazement. Smelled himself till he heard the phone, his phone go off, picking it up to see message. Come to my office. Everyone wants to see you. He laughed as he put his phone down, closed his controller, and got up from the chair and walked out of the room towards her office. When he arrived at the door, Squishy stood up and immediately, tears in her eyes. You're okay? She asked hopefully. Debbie nodded and smiled. I am, thanks to all of you. Smiles spread onto her face as she tackled him in a hug and returned it, glad to see that the ordeal was over, hopefully for good. He glanced over at the live chat and smiled, seeing all the people welcoming back him back. Glad to see him safely return home. He had seen everything. They knew what was going on. And if he needed them again, they would be there. Hit the targets did no chance against the realities of this world. He belonged in Minecraft, and he deserved to stay there for good. It was better that way for all of them. And he knew that. Even though he hadn't been able to finally finish him once, finish it once and for all, at least they had one. He was very happy about that. 
that is the end of that story. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah. It didn't take me long to write. And it takes me long to tell, I suppose. And yeah, if you like this, be sure to like the video. And <coughs> let me know any ideas. Hi. And yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you later. Bye!